Exchange 2010. And if I take a look at my system real quick, you can see my IP address is 172.16.0.101. And if I ping my domain, advancednet.prv, I can see that I'm able to communicate with it. And that is 172.16.0.100, which is my Active Directory server. So this is a member server. Uh, if we take a look at my server manager, actually, um, right now I currently have no roles installed. And if I go to disk management, you see I have two drives, one 40 gig drive and one 60 gig drive. And properties of my computer, I have uh, four gigs of RAM, some minimal installation of my Windows server in order to run Exchange. So now I'm going to start the installation. First thing it says I need to have the .NET Framework installed. So I'm going to click on that and install the .NET Framework. This is going to go out to the internet and download. And we'll hopefully be able to download it. Looks like I need to go to the settings and change that. Set up. Okay, so I get a message saying I must use the role management tool to install this. So I'm going to go back to my role management. Okay, so underneath application server is where you're going to find the .NET framework you need to install. So you're going to add the required features and hit next. And you should be okay there and hit install. My installation is complete. Hit close. Minimize this. And now it shows that the .NET framework has been installed. PowerShell is already installed. Now we need to choose the exchange language option. Install only languages from the DVD. Next we have install Microsoft Exchange. And it will go through and check to make sure we have everything. Okay, it brings up the setup wizard. We're gonna next accept the license. Uh, error reporting to improve the quality. This is sending information to Microsoft. We're gonna say no to this for now. And then installation type. We're gonna be doing a typical exchange installation, installing the hub transport, client access, mailbox, and exchange management tools. This is gonna give us a basic email server with all the roles installed on one physical server. Uh, the path for the program files, we're going to leave it installed on the C drive, and then later on we'll choose the D drive to actually store um, the actual data store. So we're at next. 
uh, the exchange organization. We'll call this advanced networking. Client computers. Do you have any client computers running Exchange 2003 or Entourage in your organization? I'm going to say no. We're using the latest and greatest. Uh, the client access server role will be internet facing. So this is where we have Outlook web access. Um, Outlook anywhere. Um, so if we do so, we're going to enter in the name. And the name that we're going to use is advanced.ncstech.org. Um, actually, we're going to use Aaron.ncstech.org. So that'll be my own personal subdomain. Uh, so we can send internet emails. And no, I do not wish to join this program at this time. Now it's going to go through and check to make sure that we have all the prerequisites installed. While it's doing this, I will uh, pause the video. Okay, so my readiness check's finished, and I need to run a few things. Here it says uh, the Active Directory scheme is not up to date, um, and all of these are preparing for Active Directory or Exchange to be running on Active Directory, so I need to run setup slash prepare Active Directory. Um, it actually says that setup will actually do this. Uh, we'll find out if it actually does. I've always done it before manually. And then other things down here. We're going to use the Hub Transport in order to use Outlook, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Outlook Web Access. We need to install this 2007 Office System Converter at this link here. So we're going to go to Microsoft.com and download that. And then we need to install IIS. So as you install the information services is installed because we're going to be using the web access. So those are some, and then these errors are all subsequent errors related to not having IS or the software package installed. So we're going to head out to uh, Microsoft.com and see if we can't download and install that software. And get the correct URL. They won't let you copy and paste it. One, two, three, three, eight, zero. We want the 64 bit version. Okay, that's installed. And then we need to install IIS. So we're going to go back to our server manager, uh, go to roles, and we are going to add another role. And that role is going to be the web services. You just hit Next on the default, and hit next and install. It shouldn't get everything uh, just by the default web server IIS selection. While that's installing, I'm going to pause this. Oh, it looks like it's done. Looks good. Close this and let's do another check. Okay, I retried again and it shows me that I need to um, ensure that Microsoft IS is installed, which it is, and it but it says here the service appears to be running. However, I must exit out of this setup and then try again. So I'm gonna to have to cancel out of this and then start it up again. So we're gonna start this up and we'll see it finish. So I'm gonna pause it till I get back to that same step. One little uh, tip you can do for 
installing exchange is running this little command from the command prompt to ensure that all the different services that you need are installed. So that command, if you go to the command line and go to the CD that has the Exchange 2010 on it, I happen to actually have that located in on my E drive under Exchange 2010. You can change directory to the scripts directory. And in the scripts directory, there's a bunch of XML files, or I'm sorry, PS1 and XML files that you can use to install um, or run different uh, scripts to actually install the services that you want to install. So if you type the command server manager cmd space ip to install, show progress, the exchange typical xml, then the exchange typical xml file, this file right here, is located in the current directory that I'm in. So I'm in the exchange server 2010 cd under the scripts folder. And then hit do the dash restart and that'll restart the uh, server if it needs to after you have installed all the correct services that you need because there are a few hidden ones within IIS that don't typically get installed. So running that command we can see that some things here it says that no changes were made because all the roles and features have been installed correctly but you would see a list of services that it needed to install and then if it needed to it would then restart the server. So running this command is a very helpful command right here. Server manager cmd space ip space exchange dash typical that xml which is located in the scripts folder. All right, so once we're done with that, let's see the next problem we have here is the net tcp port sharing service must be set to automatic. We can make that change within server manager. So we go to server manager under services and I click on standard. Let's extend this out a little bit. So we're gonna go to the T's and we want the TC, sorry, the net TCP. So we want the N. Net TCP port sharing service. It started, but it's not set to automatic. So we need to Right click on that and go to properties and we need to change it to automatic startup type. Hit apply and we should be able to run through this again. And the only thing that should pop up is the Active Directory prep, which the installation should automatically run for us. Yep, that error message and then everything else should be successful. And we should be able to start the installation. So we click install. And it's going to go through and install every single one of these different components. And I'm going to pause the video while it does this. Okay, my installation just completed. And we see that everything was successful with no errors. Finalize this installation using Exchange Management Council. Hit finish and it should pop up Microsoft Exchange Management Council. So next thing we do is get critical updates from Microsoft Exchange. And you're gonna want to agree Install important updates only. And I actually have a lot of updates I need to do on my server. So after that's done, it's probably going to request you to reboot the server, and your exchange is now installed. Be sure to check out my other videos for more exchange management and configuration settings.